guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, I have looked better, I won't lie. Um, first of all, let's ignore the fact that I'm sunburnt, because of course you got sunburnt. Um, and also, I'm probably going to look like more of a dishevelled rat as this video goes on, because it is literally so hot. Like, it's just, it's so hot. It's 29 degrees or something, and I can't open my windows because it's too loud. So. Please pray for me because I may look like a melted heap by the end of this video, but anyway, today I thought I'd talk about the UCAT this year because I know that there have been some changes that have been put in place in light of the whole COVID-19 situation. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just try to condense them as best I can into this video and also talk about how you can adapt to these changes and how you can best prepare for these changes, I guess. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that this video is in partnership with Medify, and I will talk a bit more about them later on. I guess we can start off by saying that after seemingly a lot of consideration about whether to hold the UCAT this year and how to kind of make it safe and fair, the UCAT is going ahead this year. The UCAT consortium have said that it is going to be business as usual in terms of the content. The test itself is going to be exactly the same as it was in previous years. It's going to have the same content, same timings and all that kind of stuff, but there are a few modifications that they've put in place. So first of all, obviously the timings for test taking have changed since I think now we would be coming up to when test taking would actually start, whereas this year registration opens on the 1st of July and the test can be taken between 3rd of August and the 1st of October, which means that even if you take the test at the latest dates available, you still have about two weeks to decide or mull over your uni choices before the UCAS deadline on the 15th of October. They have advised to book your test for as early as you possibly can, because obviously the whole COVID situation is really uncertain. We don't really know what's going to happen in September, for example, or what the situation will be then. Even if you set your test date for the earliest available, if you start revising around about now, you've still got plenty of time to get really, really good at the UCAT. You only really need, in my opinion slash experience, about a month to do a lot of solid practice and actually get a really decent score um, as long as you're obviously doing consistent practice throughout that time but obviously don't worry if for whatever reason you can't take your test that early and you need to sit it later on um, if there are new restrictions put in place due to corona and all that kind of stuff they've said that they'll either have to reschedule your test or you will have to sit it online if you were originally going to take it in a test center and that brings us on nicely to the main change that they've put in place for this year which is that they're doing a dual testing system so you can basically either take your test at a Pearson View test center which is what everyone would have done in previous years or they've now brought in the option to take the test at home using the Pearson View online proctoring system. Um, so before I get on to how that actually kind of works, um, I wanted to talk about some things that you should probably take into consideration when you're deciding where you want to sit this test. First of all, obviously it depends on whether there's a test centre open near you that you can get to safely. Um, and also it depends on whether you feel comfortable going to a test centre. Obviously some people might be more at risk. Um, they might have family members that are at risk for corona um, or you just might feel a bit you know anxious and iffy to go and sit a test at a test center and that's completely fine in that case you can sit the test online also have a think about where you feel you'll perform better so this year there's i guess the luxury of a choice if you're not bound by other restrictions on where you can sit the test so do you think you're going to do better in the comfort of your own home or do you think you'll actually do better in a kind of formal official test taking setting and also obviously you need to have the necessary arrangements at home for you to be able to sit the test at home so first of all you need to have the correct technical equipment a personal computer or a laptop to be able to sit the test obviously 
Um, it needs to have a webcam, it needs to have a mic that are working. Um, you should try to get your hands on a mouse if you don't have one, like if your family member has one or if someone you know you can borrow one from because it's a lot easier to take the test with a mouse rather than using your laptop trackpad. You also need a stable internet connection. So if you know off the bat that your internet can get a bit iffy, I would advise not to take the test at home because it's just going to be a lot of stress and a lot of faff. But that being said, if your internet just randomly cuts out during the test, um, they, the system will know and the time will stop and it will only restart once you have internet connection back so you're not going to lose any test time. You also need to have a quiet area in your house to sit the test in without any distractions. For example, people can't come into your room during the test and stuff like that. So that's something to consider and you also need to have the correct form of ID for the online test and if you're under 18 which I think the majority of us will be you also need your parent to have the correct form of ID for themselves and you need your parents verbal consent at the start of the test to be able to take it. So now moving on to a little bit about how the online proctoring will actually work since it's quite a new concept to a lot of us probably. Um, so basically you book your test as normal whatever then there is a check-in process for the test which you need to they said you can begin 30 minutes before your test starts they've advised to start it as early as possible just in case there are obviously any problems um so that you're not late for your test because i think after 15 minutes if you're late like they just won't take let you take your test so um that's something to look out for then basically you just close all your apps on your computer or laptop or whatever um, that you don't need. You download the Pearson OnView software which is what you're going to take your test on. Then you have an exam access code that you can use to log in with um, and you basically take pictures of yourself so like a headshot. Um, you take pictures of your ID and you take pictures of your surroundings basically just to make sure that it is actually you that's sitting the test and also that your surroundings are appropriate like there aren't any notes out or anything that you can use to help you cheat if you have any issues throughout the test you can use the chat feature to speak to staff and basically you're just monitored um, the entire time by a proctor so that's actually like a real person they have access to your mic to make sure that you're not talking to anyone or anyone's feeding you answers and stuff like that and they also have access to your webcam um, so that they can see if you're like, you know, looking away from the screen suspiciously um, for periods of time, like if you're maybe reading notes or using a handheld calculator or whatever. So, you know, it's a pretty good system to try and maintain the integrity of the test. There is a short step-by-step -step video on the Pearson View website about these online proctored exams, which I would really recommend for you to watch. Um, but essentially, it's exactly the same as a normal test it's the same as the test that you would sit in a test center if that was what you decided to do so you won't be disadvantaged by your choice and another change that they've introduced is a scratch pad feature for note taking so if you're at a test center taking the test you have as usual a kind of note board um, with a pen so that you can write down any working out or whatever um, and if you're taking it at home, you can have a whiteboard. It needs to fit their specifications, but you can have a whiteboard and erasable pens. You do need to like show it to the proctor at the start and the end to make sure that you've erased everything. Additionally, they've brought in a scratch pad feature, which is available on the screen. Um, this might be useful if you obviously don't have a whiteboard at home and you're taking the test online or it might simply just be more useful for certain types of questions just to type it out on the screen rather than using handheld note-taking methods but basically it is a pop-up window that you can click that comes up it's similar to the on-screen calculator so you can use it at any time during your test you can use the shortcut alt d um, to just access it even easier than having to click and basically you can type out notes into it you can copy and paste within that scratch pad you can't copy from the question itself so that's something to bear in mind but yeah it's just another form of note taking it closes when you move on to the next question um but the notes stay on there they only get erased when you move on to a completely 
separate section of the UCAT. That's just a quick overview of what the UCAT is going to look like this year. For more information, I would strongly recommend you go and have a look at the UCAT website and also they have um, candidate guides for the online and the test centre um, test formats which I would recommend you go and read. I will leave all the links to things that I've mentioned that I can link in the description box. Also if you're looking for kind of practice tips and tips for the actual content itself I will leave a playlist in the information cards and I'll also link it in the description of all of the videos that I've made about the UCAT because there have been many. Um, as I mentioned earlier for this video I've partnered up with Medify to talk about their UCAT practice platform. So if you've been around on my channel for a while you'll know that I have talked about them multiple times in the past. I've worked with them a few times and I personally used Medify when I was preparing for my UCAT. Um, I made a video after that and I was basically just raving about Medify because honestly it is what single-handedly helped me improve my score so so much and honestly I owe what I got in my UCAT or UK cat as it was known back then to Medify. So yeah I really really love the platform website if you can't tell already. If you're wondering by the way because I do get this question whenever I talk about the UCAT I got a 2940 um, overall score and a band one in situational judgment. So Medify have actually introduced the scratch pad feature on their website since it's going to be available to use in the actual exam itself now and as with anything in the UCAT you're not going to get good at it unless you familiarise yourself with everything and you do lots of practice. So today I thought I'd take you quickly through the features that Medify has that I think make it super useful for practicing for your UCAT exam and also just show you how everything works. And before we get onto that, I did want to mention that Medify are actually giving away a free season pass. So basically one person will get full access to all of their UCAT resources for free for the entirety of the UCAT testing season. Um, so it doesn't matter when you take your test. So yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, do stick around till the end of this video when I will talk a bit more about how you can enter. First of all, one of the most useful things for practicing for the UCAT about Medify is that it's online um, and it closely simulates what the actual exam will be like. It's really important to do a bunch of practice online because ultimately that's going to be the format of your actual tests and you just need to get used to stuff like clicking through the questions, um, using the on-screen calculator, using shortcuts, etc, etc. And the layout of the Medify website itself is really clean, um, which makes it just really easy to use and navigate. Also, I found that Medify was the closest to what the actual exam was like in terms of difficulty out of all the resources that I used, so it's a good thing to go off. And what I actually really love about Medify is just how comprehensive it is. It really has everything that you need to practice for the UCAT on there. And the attention to detail is just really, really great in my opinion. So I've got the website open in front of me and I'll put it on the screen so we can have a bit of a look at what's available. So here we have the dashboard. Um, on here you have these sections which I will get into later. Um, first of all, as you can see, there is this video checklist. Um, so you've got nine video tutorials, um, like general video tutorials that you can do and it tells you how long. I mean, I, I haven't watched that, but I clicked it. So um, yeah, I took my UCAT in 2017. Um, but yeah, then you have this section, which is your um, mock I guess your latest mock results. It has these little graphs which tell you a bit of an overview about how you did in the mock. I did this in my last video that I made with Medify. Um, and basically, if you click on this, it takes you to this website, which is just your full on mock breakdown of how you did. And this is honestly just what I love about this website because it is so detailed and they've really made it so easy and accessible to learn from and to kind of see where you're going wrong and how you can get better. Back on the dashboard we've also got comparisons of how you're doing in each section so you've got your 
scores compared to you know your average Medify user so you can see how you're doing compared to other people um, you can also I mean it, it tells you straight up what you're doing best in here and what you're doing worst in so and you also have a full breakdown for each individual section of like the question types or aspects of this section and how you're doing individually on each of those which is just amazing and then finally at the bottom you kind of just have a stats section so you can see a calendar you can set your test date so you can see visually how long you've got left until your test it also tells you you know how many um, questions you've done how basically just how much revision you've done um, so you can see all of that visually and you can keep track of it then we can move on to the next thing which is the checklist which is kind of a similar sort of vibe but honestly like look at this um it literally just have a checklist of everything that you can do um to prepare and it's just like it's, it's great because you know exactly what you've done you know exactly what you've got left to do and yeah like it's just a lot easier to have it done for you than to have to make one yourself you know it's all about the ease um then you have the learn section so the learn section you've got loads and loads and loads of videos on here explaining things giving tips on how to approach different aspects of the ucat the practice section has i mean it has a load of questions like you can see how many questions they have on here it's insane like you're just you're not gonna run out um you can also go on timed practice which lets you pick a number of questions to do from a particular section and it basically gives you the same timings as in the actual exam because obviously practicing under timed conditions is really important since timing is quite a big thing for the ucat it's quite a big issue and then finally we can move on to the simulate section so on here, it's basically just mock exams, which are really important to do to get yourself used to the format of the test and to get yourself used to taking the test. Um, it gives you a load of instructions and tips, which are really helpful. And then you have between four and eight mini mocks per um, section of the UCAT. And then you also have nine UCAT mocks at the bottom, which is brilliant so that is pretty much what you've got so if we have a look at a practice question um what shall we do let's go on decision making because actually no i don't want to okay well we're doing decision making <laughs> um i forgot i don't really like it um but yeah so we've got a question exactly the same as you would have in the actual ucat you can see here you've got the calculator you can move it around um close it and you have the scratch pad on here so what you can do with the scratch pad is exactly the same as in the exam you can move it you can adjust the size to fit what you want it to be for that question um, and yeah basically you just type um, there's copy paste cut undo all that kind of stuff let's just um, put in some random this is gonna be so wrong um, yeah I got that very very wrong um, but yeah basically it just gives you really detailed explanations for why that answer is that answer um, uh, which is obviously really helpful if you're trying to figure out where you went wrong and not make the same mistakes again in the future. As I mentioned earlier, Medify are giving away one free season pass. So all you have to do to enter to win it is subscribe to my channel. And also I was trying to figure out a way to like distinguish the comments. So um, comment down below why you want to do medicine or dentistry because I know that dentists also have to take the UCAT um, and also leave your Instagram handle as well so that I can contact you um, so yeah I will choose the winner on the 1st of July good luck thank you for watching this video I know it was a bit long and a bit rambly and honestly I'm just overheating <laughs> um, I did want to talk a little bit about some main advice that I have for taking the UCAT this year but I think it's long enough so I will leave that in the description box if you want to go have a bit of a read of that but that's pretty much it for this video um if you enjoyed it found it helpful or whatever give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel um thank you to Medify for sponsoring this video and yeah I wish you all the best of luck for your UCAT if you're taking it this year and I will see you in my next video bye